Hey guys, Flaming Super Panda here with my next tutorial. This tutorial will be about making a Minecraft bucket server. This also works for the normal server. I might make a separate video about it, however, just because it's a little bit different. So the first thing you're going to want to do is create a new folder. And I'm just going to name it Minecraft server. You can name it whatever you want, just make sure it's on your desktop for easy access. Next, you're going to want to go online, open up your web browser, and just I'm just going to Google search bucket and go to the bucket forums. Here you're going to want to download the recommended build so you click here and you click on craft bucket snapshot dot jar you click that and you're going to want to keep it you're going to want to show it in the folder which will be your downloads folder and then drag it into your folder your minecraft folder all right. So now, once you have it in here in your Minecraft server folder, you're going to want to make a start.bat file. A start.bat file runs your server. It will run it through a command prompt rather than through Java, which makes it a little more manageable. So what you're going to want to do is right click and make a new text document and name it start. Open that up and copy and paste the this jumbled mess. <laughs> it's not really a jumbled mess. It means something, but copy and paste this from the description into here. If you're running Windows 7, you need to type in times 86 in parentheses next to program files because that's where Java is saved. If you're running Mac, I suggest finding another tutorial because I do not own a Mac and I do not know how it works. So, sorry. You're going to want to save as start.bat. Make sure you type in .bat and click save. And then you can close out of the start text. So now you have this batch file. And when you double click on this, it'll start up your server. After your ser once your server is started up, it'll give you a, l a bunch more files in your server file. This is how you manage your bucket server. So we'll just let that run in the background first thing is plugins. Bucket servers allow plugins. On the Bucket Forums website, there is a section for plugins, and you can find any kind of plugin you want just to make the game more towards how you want it. World is your world file. There's the nether file. The band IPs, you type in IP addresses that you don't want to access. Band players, your band, you type in the band player's username that you don't want them to access. This bucket file, it just looks like a jumbled mess right now. And it will be until you install plugins that are that you can change settings on. This is the jar file that holds the information for the server. Ops, make people op ops. Permissions, you don't need that right now. Some Some plugins, when you install them, you have to put things in the permissions server this is like a log of everything that happens on your server then this is where most of the customizing begins so your level name 
is world. If you in, if you put in a new world file, you would change the name of world right here to whatever your world file that you're inputting is called. Allow another true. To turn it off, you type in false. View distance 10. Spawn monsters, true. Online mode, true. Online mode means that the person has to have a registered version of Minecraft. If it's on false, then if they have a cracked version, they can still access your server. I usually leave this on true. Difficulty 1. It's like peaceful mode. Then there's 2, which is like normal, and 3, which is like hard. Uh, or 1 is like easy, I'm sorry. 0 is peaceful. Game mode, 0, is, is survival mode. If you change it to 1, that puts your server in creative mode. So keep it at 0. Spawn animals, true, straightforward. Max players, 20. Depending on your... Um, depending on your computer settings, you c you can hold more players, and you can find that out. There are specific websites for it. I'll post a link to one in the description so that you can figure out what you want to set your max players at. Server IP is your is what people type in to connect to it. We'll get to that later. Player versus player, you can hurt other players. Level seed. Unless you want to don't want a random map, you can put in a level seed. Server port. This is important. 25565. That's the port that Minecraft runs in. And we'll use that when we port forward. Allow flight. If this is set to true, then if you have like Zom's fly mod, you can fly around. If it's set to false and you're in creative mode, you can still can fly around. Whitelist set to true their name has to be in the whitelist file for them to be able to do it and the message of the day is when you're connecting to a server the message underneath the name of the server that you give it will be the message of the day don't need to mess with that so once you finished configuring you can save and exit your start.bat and here's your whitelist so those are all the files in your Minecraft server folder. You can go ahead and X out of that and type stop into your command thing and end your server so that it's not running constantly in the background because that will lag your computer a lot. So now we're ready to port forward. Depending on your router, you're going to want to type in your IP address, which you can go to, you can find out by doing this. IP config after you do Windows sign R and type in CMD. Sorry, I did that a little fast, but I'm, here we go. So you're going to want to type in, scroll down until you find default gateway which should be something along the lines of 192.168.1.1. It's That's pretty standard for most computers. And you'll type that in. Or if you're like me and you have a Netgear router, you can also do router login. And depending on your router, you will have a different username and password unless you've set it differently. The default ones are here. There are several websites that you can go to for to find the default password of your given make and model of router. I'll also post a link to that in the description. But for now, I'll just log in. Once you log in, this is for Netgear, but should be something like this on any router's page. You should look for the section that says port forwarding. As you can see, I already have a Minecraft port ready, but I can edit the service to show you what you need to do. Service name, you set it as Minecraft or whatever you want to, it doesn't matter. Make sure the protocol is set to TCP and UDP, both of them. Some, of some routers might require you to set them separately, but make sure they're both set. Start port and end port is that 25565 that you saw earlier. 
you need to do that so that it knows what port to run Minecraft off of. And finally, your server IP address, 192.168.1. This time, you're going to want to put your IPv4 address in there. So mine is 0.4 at the end, so you would put 0.4. You would click Apply or Create, and then you have your new port. That's all you need to do. Now to find out what router, to find out what your friends are going to type in to connect with, you'd go to, you can go to this website, IP Chicken. And if your friends type in this to their Minecraft, they will could be able to connect. So you're going to copy that, going to want to copy that, and in your Minecraft server, in this same thing, you're going to want to paste it next to server IP and save. So I'm going to show you that this works, just so you know. Oh, actually, I'm sorry, I can't show you with this server because I already have it. I already have a server on that port. So let me get that out for you. It's the same thing, just this one's customized for me. And I'll start the server. And so it's already done running. Now you can open Minecraft or whatever your... If you have a customized launcher, you can just open it up. Should be coming any time now. Or not. Once Minecraft opens, you're going to want to click Login. Don't go into offline mode. If Minecraft.net is not available, then just try again later once it is available because you're going to need to be connected to the, the Minecraft servers to be able to play online. Pretty straightforward. So after you log in, go to multiplayer. These are all the servers that I'm a part of. This right here, all of these underneath of this is the message of the day that I mentioned earlier. Everyone will see that before they log on. Here's my IP address. To add a server, you just type in add server, name it, type in the address. And so I'm going to connect this server is already partially built. So I'll just go down and here is my server. This is just a part but it's kind of strange so all right so here's my server you should be able to connect hand out your IP address to your friends however many players you specified should be able to play if there's if not or if there's a problem you can send me a message or leave a comment and ask for help and I'll be able to should be able to help you um, thanks for watching, guys.